tonight. I missed last week. I'm going a little early here, so I have time to share it and kind of gather some supplies. Um, if you're tuning in for a replay, just go ahead and fast forward about 15 minutes while I kind of sit here and gather my people and my stuff and, and get ready. So if you're here already, come on in. Let's chat. It's just I got about a 15-minute little time-wasting session here. So... Tell me what you're up to this midweek. Hi, Dina. Well, I'm not really going to do much for about 15 minutes. So if you want to go finish the other one or watch both, I whatever, whatever makes you happy. But just so you know, there is about 15 minutes before I start the artsy stuff. It's like uh, the numbers go up and down and up and down. And I think it's kind of funny. I don't know, people who think that I'm going to start doing art right away, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, I, I don't know. But maybe that's what they're thinking. All right, I've shared in a couple places. I got my heater over here. I hope Pam shows up because I posted in the description the link that she needs. <laughs> oh, that routine. Yes, yes, yes. That's all right. We've usually gotten the, the meat of the stuff done. And then that last 15 minutes is sort of just closing up shop and chatting anyways. So you don't usually miss much, I don't think. I do need to put my jacket on. Yowza. I'm a chilly willy. All right, all set. So what has everyone been doing? Talk to me. So tonight is fun because it is open to anybody. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, I go live for YouTube supporters, $10 tier and up. But tonight is for anybody, anybody who wants to join and hang out, chit chat, and do whatever. So what have you guys been up to? Oh, letting some fresh air in. Have they started um, building on the house or doing any foundation work or anything like that? Because your plans got approved, didn't they? You had the energy guy finish signing off.
Maybe after dinner. There you go. It's still pretty early for you, so. I was going to have a whole bunch of words cut out for this, um, but I kind of changed my mind and not because I don't want to do the words, but I missed last week and then got caught up this week on orders. And so I'm, uh, oh no, I didn't do it. So I have to figure out something to do. Oh my goodness, of course, right? Yes, definitely fingers crossed. Because your husband is the builder, is that correct? So once it's approved, he'll just get to work. And that's really nice that, like, you'll be pestering him and, you know, not somebody who has your money and doesn't care, like, he'll want a place to sleep. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. Mm, so if you're wondering, by the way, about the Bookmakers Collective, I put the link in the description to register for our launch party. So the launch party... Oh, hold on just a second. Oh, okay. No. I had to make sure that my webcam did not disconnect. It wasn't the webcam. It was, in fact, uh, one of my hard drives. It's okay. Um, anyway, so the launch party, if you're interested in the Bookmakers Collective, the launch party is absolutely free. We're giving six secrets to being a confident bookmaker. We're giving away a VIP access spot. Um, there's lots happening. We're doing show and tell, artist chit-chat, so... There's a link in the description of this live session for you to register for that party. And that party is the morning of Super Bowl Sunday. So you're just going to be hanging out anyways. You may as well join us and see some kick-ass books because holy cow, you guys, there is some amazing stuff happening. Um, okay, so I have not gone to see any more houses, but I'm looking at plenty online. And we're waiting for credit scores to update and DTIs um, to finalize some numbers. And there's a house that I'm interested in. I, I, we'll see. That's all we got. We'll see. We're waiting for numbers to finalize and, and all that jazz. So I have not gone to see any more yet. But I have my eye on one. <laughs> And it's just making sure that it works for everyone involved. That's right. It'll either work out or it won't. That's all we can. You know, we've always been that way. And um, we always will be. Turn the sound down on my phone, so that's not bothering us. Sorry about that. So I think actually what I want to do is I want to do more... Um, like little pull tabs and things that kind of say open here, pull, you know, not, I don't want them to say that, but excuse me. I want them to 
want it to be specific. So like I would put a little tab here. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my sewing machine set up and I'm going to create some little stitched embellishments tonight with you. Angela, you are not late. Don't even stress it. You're not even close to late. We have not even really started. So you are all good. Hi, Tina. How are you? I see you so infrequently. It's so nice when you get a chance to pop in. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to run a new bobbin because my bobbin ran out and then we refilled it with white. And I am not using white tonight. You got knocked out by a cow? By a goat? What did you get? By a horse? The client you support as in a person, like you're like a home health nurse, like that. That is hella rough. Ugh, sorry about that. Was there someone different who could take over for you today? I didn't know that you did work separate from the farm. All right, so I'm just going to thread a bobbin really quick, and then I'm going to work on some little 3D embellishments. Hello. Uh, let's see. I'm going butterfly. If you've been here before, I asked your name, and if you told me, I apologize for forgetting. So Tina, do you guys call your land a farm or do you call it a ranch? What do you got? Do you guys have animals or is it more food based? What do you guys tell me? Tell me more. Beth. Yeah. Hmm. I'll try to remember that. I can't guarantee anything though, Beth. I'll probably remember for tonight. And if I say it a couple more times, Beth, then I'll have a better choice, better, <laughs> better success rate. Okay, okay, Tina. That, and I thought that you guys had um, animals, yeah. Hi, Lisa. Uh, I have been, Beth. <laughs> I have been working in um, this journal, like little construction book type thing right here. So I decided tonight that I want some more layered 3D sort of tag type embellishment stuff. I don't really have a name for it, um, but 
I want to stitch it together because I love stitching. So I'm going to thread my bobbin really quick because I ran out of black. And then hopefully um, get to layering up some of my favorite papers and embellishments and uh, things like that. So yeah. Hi, Emma. How are you? It's going to get a little bit noisy for a second. Hold on here. Oh, I should maybe turn the machine on first. Okay. Now it's going to get noisy. <laughs> oh, and not near as noisy as I thought. Um... Your lamb tastes very different. You grow wool, Tina? That's awesome. I Beth, I know I gotta keep saying Beth. Beth, Beth, Beth. Um so Beth says that she has a hard time sewing on paper. And I find that your stitches probably need to be lengthened. Like the length of your stitch needs to be longer so that it doesn't tear the paper so much. I always use like the um, longest stitch that I can, whatever my machine is capable of doing. That's what, that's what I end up doing. All right, I'm going to thread my machine, and then it'll be ready. Now, I don't know that we're necessarily going to get to this part tonight, but at least it'll be ready if we do. No, not the tension. So your tension, your machine, well, I, I guess it depends on how old your machine is. I try really hard not to mess with the tension because tension is really finicky. So what I do with ten, with tension, tension um, it like my machine auto sets it, and if you end up having issues with tension, a lot of times it can be because you're using a different thread in your bobbin than you have in the top. Um, or in some cases, it just is that the tension is, you know, bad. Um, but that, yeah, the actual length of the stitch from one, from where it goes in to where it comes back out, that is... That's usually the culprit if you're having a hard time stitching paper. I know. I seriously love stitching. Everybody knows it. And if you don't, you will soon. Like, it, stitching makes me super happy. I like hand stitching. I, I like machine stitching. I like it all. Yes. Okay, so... My machine isn't ready, so if we get there, then that will be good. I have this. So this is the project I've been working on live with you guys. And I have had some questions. People are wondering, um, you know, if there's instructions for this. So only what I've done live. And I haven't even worked on this book outside of live. And if you can't find it. Hi, Pam. Okay, I'm so sorry. I have to interrupt real quick. Pam, you're looking for the link to register for the Bookmaker Collective launch party, okay? Look in the description of this live video. It's there waiting. I put it there specifically for you and then anyone else who's interested in joining the Bookmaker Creative launch party. So it's totally free. It's the morning of Super Bowl Sunday. We've already had over 700 people register just to hang out. We're going to give away a VIP seat. We're going to... Um, show what books we're making throughout the year. There's six of us. Each of us are making a different book. Um, there. Oh, we're giving six secrets to being a confident bookmaker. That It's all free. Just come hang out, see what we're up to. They're really amazing artists. I'm super humbled and honored to be able to join them. Uh, hashtag the Bookmaker Collective. Check it out. Find the other artists. Uh, and register for that free Zoom hangout session because it's going to be hilarious. It's going to be fun. Um, you know, we're just going to power through some information and some tips and tricks. And uh, it's going to be really exciting. So Super Bowl Sunday morning, right before the Super Bowl. 
Uh, okay, so now, oh, good, Pam, you found it. Okay, I guess I didn't need to go on that long about it. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so back to this. I have been working on this book for a couple months, I think, live with you guys. It started on Facebook. So that may be part of the issue. Someone said they weren't finding all of the, the videos. They, some of them are on Facebook. So you can go to my Facebook page, Dee Dee Designer, and you just look under videos for live sessions, and you should see a bunch of videos about this. And then also I've been putting them in a playlist here on YouTube since we've been going live on YouTube. I am sorry that I missed last week. Thank you very much for being patient and um, letting me make the week special for my kid Zilla's birthday. Gabe turned 10 last week, so that's really exciting. And with quarantine life, you know, he didn't get to have a party with his friends or anything. So it was good that we made sort of each day special. And I appreciate you accommodating me while I did that. So this is the book that we're working on. I had talked about cutting out a bunch of words to from book text to fill this in. Um, but I got sidetracked last week with Gabe's birthday. And then this week I've been really busy filling in orders that came from the pop-up shop and, and things in regular orders too. Um, so I didn't get to that, but, but tonight while I was sitting here chatting with you and getting set up, it occurred to me that I, I want like more fullness on this. So I'm going to work on little tabs tonight, just little bits and pieces little 3D embellishments, little layered type pieces that I can stitch and glue and staple into this book so that it gets even fatter. Because, I mean, seriously, like, it could be, it could sit up here and I would be super happy. And so to do that, I'm going to gather, I have, of course, my masking tape. I have some washi tape. Uh, I have, you know, some uh, roll, some receipt paper. I love the numbers. I have book text and map stuff and, and just lots of little things here in my reach that are all very neutral themed and lend themselves really well to what's going on here already. Hi, Nancy. Welcome. I have some wax paper. This is really cool. You know, little little bits of wool. Speaking of wax, I, I know, I know I'm going to get my little oven going so that I can melt some wax and do at least, oh, I just broke the wick. Um, do at least one wax seal in this book. But if I just light it and set it to the side, it doesn't have to be the main focus. So that's good. Because I know my YouTube supporters are so sick. Hello, Lynn Bald Legal. How are you? That's right, right? Yeah, I think that's right. I know, Doreen. That's I, <laughs> I, I set it to the side so we don't have to stare at it. And it doesn't have to be the only thing I talk about. Because I know that my YouTube supporters are so sick of wax seals. But I can't get over it. It's so exciting. <laughs> that's all right. So that's to the side. I'm going to work on some other just little things. I'm going to put little things together. I'm going to grab a needle. I have lots of vintage book text. Um, a little bit of hand-painted fabric. I've got some wax thread. I've got black DMC. I've got cream-colored DMC. I got everything. I just picked this up because I knew I needed a bunch of black to do some hand stitching. I've never bought a thing of embroidery thread this big. And then I don't understand the numbers. I mean, I just haven't sat down to pay attention. But this one's a size 10, which seems like a really nice, like I really like the weight. So I got big old Aunt Lydia's crochet thread. So got lots of stuff to stitch with. Oh, I saw your message, Doreen. How is it? Do you love it? Have you tried it? Do you hate it? I'm so excited that they're arriving, that people are getting them. All right. I have some sari ribbon from Umwal Studio. I have some of my fabric that I've been testing out. I'm waiting for somebody else to get their fabric so they can tell me 
um, what they think about it, which is sucks because it's taking so long. It's lost in the mail. One of those packages that's being rerouted, excuse me, over and over. All right. I have some scissors. I have this little bit. Okay. This should be enough. This should be enough to play. Fancy, I think yours is just so all over. Like it's, I don't know that there's a solution to this. The thing I have to remember about working on this is that these need to be small, like super small because the book itself is small. So I've got it close at hand so I can compare it because I can tell I was already sort of making these little embellishments really big and they they just can't be there's no space for them in this journal if they are big i gotta get a glue on the glue stick oh no here's one that one okay so even though i'm going to stitch and or hand stitch i still want to play with things and um you know layer them up and and make sure that they're secure so that when I'm moving things around, they aren't coming apart and that would just be shitty. Let's be honest, right? It wouldn't be great if they all fell apart. And at this point, I don't even have a plan. Like they'll, they'll turn into tabs or little pull bits or I'm not sure, but I, I just know that I definitely want some more 3D stuff in there. So All right, it doesn't want to rip that way. Let's go the other way. There we go. Oh, I like that. So, so far I have just, oh, I keep, my arm keeps pushing this down. Um, pushing down the chat. So far, I have glued a piece of book text to a piece of vintage receipt paper roll. I have a little bit of duck cloth and there's some wax paper on the back. And I want to stitch a like a hefty black X right here at the top to just add, you know, some oomph. Oh, Doreen, which one did you get? I'm really glad you're enjoying it. Nancy, from me to Nancy, she lives in Michigan and I live in Las Vegas and she is one of the unfortunate souls who is still waiting for her package from December. All right, I got to grab a needle. This one looks good. work. The X and the boat. Gotcha. I stamped up that boat last night so crooked. <laughs> so funny. All right. How does this crochet thread work? Where does it start? So I found something. Oh, got it. All good? Oh, big hugs, Nancy. Hope you feel better. Hi, Michelle. How are you? I finished your order today. I'm waiting for... my copy paper to get here and then your order will ship tomorrow. Hi Terry, how have you been? 
All right, so I'm using cro this thicker crochet thread. It's not as thick as like a straight up DMC, but I haven't used it before, so I'm kind of excited. And I want a big X, so I am probably going to go over this a couple times. No, it's not warm at all. In fact, it was still so damn cold today. I have the heater pointed right at my back so that I don't die out here. Because <laughs> it's dark, so there is no sunlight keeping the outside of my shed warm. Whoops. Do you have to be careful when you're going in and out of paper, of course, not to rip it. Don't be crazy like me. But I do want to go twice. So, so that I don't rip the paper, I'm going to try really hard to just go through the regular, the same holes that are already there. Yeah, 49 is freezing. Yes, it's so cold. It actually, so that is, did you just look? That's because the sun was out and it's just started going down. Um, it was, th it was 34 this morning when we got up. Yeah, you know what? I grew up in Wyoming, Gillette. I do not, uh, I totally understand what actual cold weather is like. I do, I swear. But now I've been here for nine years and I, I've i acclimated. So it is chilly. It's cold as balls today. <laughs> and you cannot, uh, I, I will not give it up. It is, it's cold. <laughs> Hi, Diane. I like this. All right, one down, like a million to go. Yeah, I love when it's warm. I really do. I, I would much rather it be warm than cold. That's for sure. Like, I love living in the desert. There are a couple things that I would change, obviously, but for the majority, I uh, I enjoy being here. I swear, it, it acclimation happens really fast. So I've been here nine years now, so we, which is mind blowing to say out loud. But truly, um, it it only took us two years to then to be cold in the winter, even though we came from Wyoming where it gets to negative thirty. <laughs> So it's a whole 60 degrees difference, but we are not like we don't, we do not, it feels the same. That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> oh, thank you, Tina. How, like, what have you been creating? I'm glad to have you along. All right. So this is the edge of a piece of fabric. And at the edge, there's usually like us, this is upholstery fabric. So it has lots of weaving going on in these fibers. And um, it has like a little white thread that keeps all the, the other threads from unraveling. So I have to get rid of it because it's hideous and doesn't match the rest of the fabric. But once it's gone, it's going to look so cool. So I'm just pulling it out. Sorry, it's not fancy art, but... You got to do what you got to do. Okay. And I've loved adding so many fibrous bits to everything. It just is so fun. I, I don't want all these to be the same shape and size, but they're going to be pretty similar because of the size of the book that they're going to go in. And I've already got all these fabulous tags. So wherever these go, like I don't want them covering a whole bunch of stuff up either. I've already been working on these bits for quite a while. So just keeping size in mind. Not trying not to get too big. All right. 
I think I'll set that one to the side. I can stitch across there. That will be good. Here's some hand-painted muslin that we did a while back. And I want just one really big black stripe, so I'm going to cut it down. Yeah, love that. Oh, well, thank you for saying that, Tina. I love that you are loving your jelly plate. Have you used it for backgrounds in your scrapbook pages? That would be cool. Stand up and get my stapler. I just enjoy sharing so much, like, I, you know? I like teaching, I like connecting with people. So you are welcome to be here, bring your friends, let's hang out. I always, whenever I use a stapler, and especially the tiny stapler, I always flip it over and um, mash down those little feet because they're they're kind of turds. They're small, so they don't really want to close up all the way. And I don't want to hurt myself or have other people hurt themselves um, or it to come undone. So they work. Okay, so Michelle says, speaking of jelly plates, my Umwa Studio stencils work the best for that alcohol technique, and they seriously do. Like, it is hella awesome just how good it was. Like, I, I loved it, too, and I'm so glad you loved it, because it was, it's incredible how well it works. I don't know if it's because they're thicker or because that's what sets on while studio stencils like apart, right? Like stencils are stencils. Yeah, I get it. Um, but I made mine out of extra thick plastic so that they had amazing um, thickness for when you're working with mediums like gel medium and gesso and things like that. So they had some like super, super thick dimension to them. And yeah, they really are so awesome for that technique. I agree. Thank you for saying that. Okay, so I didn't make it very far, but I, I want to wax seal this little guy. I'm going to use, I'm going to put just a little bit. So I'm going to use the galaxy seal. So it has little stars and spots on it from the carving that I did in Carve December. So I'm going to use just a little bit of wax, not a lot. Because it's small. And I put it on a piece of plastic in case it does still squish out. Um, then I can pull it up. Let it sit for a second. So I thought about, I'm going to post on Instagram tomorrow or the next day to, to wax seal or to not, to wax seal or not wax seal. But the answer is always wax seal. I just can't stop now. Hi, Jeanette. Yeah, fingers crossed that gets there tomorrow, hey? All right, let's see, let's see. So I don't think that, yeah, there it goes. Ooh, I love it. I just love, so I love when there's like a nice big fatty wax seal, but I also love just a little smidge, like just a little, like just, it's just, just a little bit. It's different. It's, it's so nice. So neat. I can't wait to see what you guys all do with all of your wax seals, with 
all of your, I have to reorder. Um, I need to get more of the plus sign. It sold out so quickly. And then I, I, I'm out of the galaxy also, It, but it took a little bit longer. Um, and I have two paper boats left. So no, it wasn't clear wax. It's black. I just only used a tiny little bit. So you didn't get like a big mush out. So it's just this black part here. I can't remember if I finished my sentence. Anyways, I was saying, I can't wait to see what you guys do with your wax seals and your um, your washi tape and chipboard and stencil. Like, I've been shipping all kinds of stuff out. So I, I really hope you guys enjoy it when it gets there and you tag me and you tag Unwild Studio so I can share all the awesome makes that you guys are up to. This is, look at this. I bought... Um, I, ha I went antiquing a few weeks ago. I needed a break. And so we masked up and we hand sanitized up and we looked inside the stores and made sure there weren't very many people in them <laughs> when we went in. But I got a big coffee bean bag. How cool is that? Like an like vintage coffee um, burlap sack. So cut that up and I've been using that and stuff. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people do that raised, like put some metallic wax or gilding wax or even metallic like Sharpie and stuff. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So far, I've just used mine straight like they are and I, I just love it so much, but I'm going to have to get something just to try it out. Oh, ink pads. That makes sense. Yeah, I could see that. I was going to reach for a button, but maybe I don't need one. They're kind of high up. All right, got it. I, <laughs> it's a different button. I'm going for a different one, but I'm going to use one. You know, the thing is, like, I see so much gorgeous work done with buttons, and I obviously have a large collection of buttons, both, both, like, vintage buttons and ceramic buttons and handmade buttons but i just can't ever get them to look as good as everyone else i don't know what it is but that's all right i guess i'm just gonna keep trying that's all we can do right practice 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 I know I need all the colors of wax also. Like, I want to have them all in stock at Umwell Studio. The next time I put in a wax order, a wax seal order, which is going to be soon, I think, because I love them. Uh, and I need to reorder the plus sign. But anyways, um, I think I'm going to order a bigger selection and have them available individually. Thanks, Jeanette. This, so neutrals and black and white, it's kind of my jam. I love it so much. I do add color occasionally, just uh, not every day. All right. I'm going to stitch on these buttons. 
So this is cool because there is cotton fabric that I designed, and then there is silk sari, and then there's that burlap coffee bag, and then there's these vintage shell buttons. I absolutely get what you're saying, Miss Dina. Thank you for reminding me. Mind my own business. Just use the damn buttons, right? Ugh, this needle is too fat for these buttons. All right. Getting a different one. can't wait to have a different space because, and I don't know how this is going to work when I go live, so I'm not thinking that far ahead, but, like, I want to use my sewing machine and my typewriter and, you know, and my heat gun and all this stuff that takes up so much space. So I'm going to have to really think about how I set up my space when we buy a house, but it's got to be, like, extra functional because I don't like pulling out my sewing machine, putting away, taking it out, putting away. And I do have in here like a permanent space for my sewing machine. It's just that you can't see it. Um, but I thinking about my typewriter, like it's put away in its case, but I would love to just punch a couple letters on some of these little bits and bobs here. And as of right now, I can't just do that. I have to get it out. How do you guys go about managing that type of stuff? Do you have permit places for your sewing machine or your typewriter or maybe your encaustic area or your die cut machine? Where'd you get that shirt? It's handsome. I don't think so. Well, it looks a little tight in the shoulders. Yeah, but I don't want it fucking back. Yeah. <laughs> I have a very specific way I speak. In <laughs> it's the same as me. I know. This is my husband, by the way. You can't see him, but he just got home from work and he is in a shirt, like a new shirt, and he is so smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the copy paper, honey. <laughs> Love you all. See you in a little bit. <laughs> um, he is a grocery manager, and um, he's been trying to get me copy paper for like three days, but I don't know. They're they're all sold out. Let's see. Okay, I'm sorry. Now I have to read your read your messages. Uh, Doreen has taken over the basement. That's where Michelle Kostiolek is, too. Michelle Barnes, everything has a spot, but still not enough room. I know. It's just never going to work out, is it? Like, we always want more, right? Dina will. Okay, so Dina, if you guys are not familiar, Dina is in the process of building her own home right now. So her husband is a builder. And they have made these plans and she has, she's putting, oh my gosh, you guys, she's putting a courtyard like in the middle of her home. Oh, gorgeous. And she gets to design her own craft space. Oh, Lynn. Yeah. Nine by nine. So do you utilize like carts and things? Cause I have a bunch of carts too. <laughs> Jeanette, does that mean you have more than one room? Is that what you're hinting at here? <laughs> yes, and Michelle, I have seen it. I there's a lot of stuff in there though. It's not like it's it's not like it's dirty. You just have stuff. It, like it takes up space. The other thing um for Michelle is that she 
teaches a lot at Scrappy Chic. So when she has a, a supply, like she doesn't always just have one. <laughs> she needs a lot of them. Because <laughs> she teaches classes, so you got to have backups. To the guest room. I'm going to guess that you don't have many guests. <laughs> shelves on walls. Yes, I love shelves, shelves on walls. And I didn't used to, and I'm not sure why I didn't utilize that idea more, but I have started doing that. Yes, I like it. I like shelves. All right. So, um, P.S., you may see me leaving these little tails of my stitched bits and I love little fibers and hanging things and like stitches and ruffled edges and frayed edges. I love that stuff. I love it so much. The more texture, the more fiber, the happier girl, the more giddy I am. And I used to bring everything to the back and knot it and clip it and, and have it whatever. And then I started teaching with my friend Tina Walker and she asked one day she said why do you not everything in the back you don't have to do that I said what do you mean and she goes I said it's like secure that way and she goes well you're gonna glue it down anyways and so it's like three less steps you have to do and plus it gets to hang there and it just um complements all the other like hangy bits that I have I just thought what the hell, you friggin' genius. <laughs> and I have not tied off a stitch since then. And I have all these little dangly bits now, and I love it. It's so perfect. You know, Diane, um, so ever since I've been with my husband, so we've been together uh, 11, 11 years, 12 years, something like that now, and we've never had a living room. It's That has always been my art space. And then, and or work area. Um, and then, like, right now, we're bunking with his in-laws. So I have a shed outside, like a she shed type situation uh, that I'm using. But I, I just say that because I get what you mean. Like, we've never, we never needed a living room. So that, and it was always the biggest space and made the most sense for it to be my workspace. And, slash art space. It's kind of one and the same for me, so. So I get you. I get it, right? Like, you don't need a master bedroom to sleep in. Like, you could sleep somewhere else. Dina, yes. Yes, they do, don't they? <laughs> uh, you know, Michelle, I remember you talking about that. So um, you absolutely need to get your shit in gear. I'm just saying, because your brother makes amazing stuff and you do not want to miss that opportunity. Yep, Lynn, you are so right, girl. Tell her, get on her. Where do you live, Diane? You, you can just say the state. I'm sorry. I always know that's really personal. You don't have to tell us what town you live in. You certainly don't have to give us your street address. Um, but I'm so, like, the housing market is so all over the place in the U.S. right now. It's kind of crazy. But to have a master bedroom in three, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, see, Michelle, look, you shouldn't have shown your pretty little face today. Now we're all going to get on you. Okay, I'm going to open this. I want to see how these are going. I'm actually kind of excited that I had this idea because I thought this book was going to be done soon and I, I wasn't ready to be done working in it. Um, and so I'm, I, I love like natural evolution, seriously. <gasps> look at how cool this is going to look. And I love it above this. And I think that I want the... Hmm, okay, I'm going to have to think about the tail a little bit. Maybe I don't want the tail in this one. All right, look at that. I'm going to clip this tail so that it goes just under. And I'm going to glue this one here. I love it. Get out my gel medium. Make sure I get it on each tail and then put an extra little daub.
There we go. <laughs> Get her, everybody. Come on. <laughs> All right, that should be good enough to hold it there while it finishes drying. I'm gonna machine stitch this one. I use Tina Walker's button over here, so I must have already sort of had this idea in mind. I love it so much. Oh, good thing I stopped at four. I don't think I have that much space in here. Like four may be all I have space for. I could put some on the inside too, right? Yeah, I could. I think I like this one here. What do you think? I like that it's a surprise on the inside. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Gotcha, Miss Diane. Oh, that's right. I should know that because I ship to you so often. I actually did know that. I was going to make a joke about I could give away your street address, but then I thought that's kind of in poor taste in case she actually is a little nervous about that kind of stuff. So then I stopped myself. <laughs> I think I'm going to have a hard time finding a place for this one. I think it's going to have to go, yeah, like on the inside of somewhere as a surprise. Only because as I was going through this, I kind of realized that there's so much goodness already happening. <laughs> I think you're lying, Michelle. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Oh, I love that one there. I love how it looks. If I flip it over. Nope, I like it the other way. Okay. Oh, God, I'm finding places for all of these. Oh, P.S. We are down to 15 minutes, so Dina will be getting ready to leave. <laughs> and um, if you have any questions, you guys, we can chat about them now. Please bring them up. That will give us ample time to finish the discussion before we shut the live off. We do expect weekly updates. All right, so this guy, I think, would really benefit from something on it, but I'm not sure how or what. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. Yes, Jeanette, I absolutely do. Dina, 
So now Dina's going to be late picking up her kids. <laughs> P.S. Um, oh, thanks, Jeanette. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this book is made out of coin envelopes. And what I did, I took the, the tab, the closure from one coin envelope, and I glued it to the to the first one and then in a zigzag. So like this one glued to the front of this one reverse and then the next one, see it glued this way and then the next one glued here. So I just did that over and over and over until I had, well, I used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten coin envelopes. And the idea in the in the beginning um, was that I actually left the coin envelope. Whoops, not that way. Huh. Let's see. This way. Okay, see, I actually left the coin envelopes open so I could put things in them. And when I designed the tags, I was working on the tags, I was going to put them inside and be able to pull them out so that it was interactive that way also. Um, and then I, I just decided instead to utilize the tip-in idea and create a bunch of flips and flaps and folds. And they all open and close like differently. So like this one goes, well, it depends. So it actually goes this way. So this one folds down, this one's to the left. This one goes up, this one's to the right. And so like this one's even on the inside where the other one was on the outside, down to the left on the inside. Like it just depends, you know, it just depends on how it looked or how it feeds into the rest of the page because I took into consideration all of the design elements that are going on so far. And I've done some mark making and some stitching and uh, like now some little clustering and embellishing. Yeah. And it, this, um, it does close. So it does have a string on it. And now it's like getting all this crazy stuff hanging out. Oh my gosh, I love it. But it does close. So there's a string that wraps around and then keeps it all tied up like in a nice little bundle. Yeah, thank you. And I've been thinking about putting some words on it and I'm not sure yet. And, you know, image transfers and whatever I might. I don't know yet. I've just been working through it um, on, on live with you guys, just practicing and trying new things. And, of course, I'm utilizing all of my favorites as well. And I think that that helps a lot when you're experimenting with new things, if you continue to pull from the things you love. And so in my case, that's like collaging and mark making, black and white, um, stabilo work, stitching, that kind of stuff. I love all of that. And I love bookmaking too, but I've never made a book out of coin en envelopes. I've never done a zigzag book. So that part was really fun um, and is still fun. And actually each week I'm really excited to get here and hang out with you guys and work some more on this book because it's so unique and fun. Okay, so about the fabric. I, I'm i still working on it. I have only finalized one design, but I want to have a good selection. I want to have like six, I think, ready um, to launch when I launch them. I haven't I haven't 100% decided yet. Uh and I don't know how I'm going to offer them either. Like, I don't plan personally on selling yardage because to mark it up enough to make money, then I don't think it's, I don't think the price is good. But I can make the designs available for you to purchase in yardage. Or I may have something more like fabric bundles for you to pick up. And then I think that a few samples of different types, then the price could be okay. So we'll see. I, I have not decided. I'm trying to make it beneficial for everybody um, while I'm playing with the idea. But it is fun, isn't it? I love this so much. I've been using it on lots of things. <laughs> and which is not, it, which it sucks for you guys. And I do apologize. I don't mean to tease you. <laughs> Maybe a little bit, but not a lot. Also, it just occurred to me, I lost one of the little 
the 3D things I made. <laughs> One of the little tabby bits. Maybe it's in here. Huh. Well, well, it'll show up. Where did that come from? How funny. Don't tell anybody. Oh, thank you. I, I do love it, too. It's it, it was really fun to work it up. And oh, here it is it's on this side um, to get it just right, you know, to get the pattern to repeat correctly. And 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 it's fun and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. I like playing with it. So that's what I think, too, Lynn, because then I could do like um, so this is a cotton and it's, you know, great for journal work and stitching and things like that. But there are other, there's like canvas and um, some silky types and some chiffon types. And so it could be a good, a good variety. Yeah. We'll see. We will see. Any other questions? Any other things you would like to chat about? Oh, th you are welcome. And thank you for being here. And I will be here next Wednesday. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm going to keep working in the book. Maybe I'll make some more 3D bits. I didn't even get to stitch to, to machine stitch tonight. So yeah, we'll see this one so much that it just is so cool with the washi tape on it too. Anyways, back at you, Lynn. Good night, Doreen. YouTube supporters, I will see you back here tomorrow night. I will post the link tomorrow in the community, okay? So be on the lookout for that. And that's kind of all I got. We're working in the Chunky Girl tomorrow, by the way. It's so close to done also. I'm going to have to really brainstorm some fun new projects. Sweet dreams to you as well. Everyone have a great evening. Oh, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching. Thanks for being here. Good night, Pam. <laughs>